The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. There was a man in the Bible that we all hope to be like today. He worked for God and performed many miracles in the name of Jesus. He suffered to make sure the gospel gets to every part of the world. He didn't care what he would have to go through. He gladly went through everything. I am talking about St. Paul the Apostle, who was formerly known as Saul of Tarsus. None of us would pray for the life of Saul. He was a killer. He was full of hatred. He used to hunt Christians for a living. There are many wicked people like that in the world who have done evil in the eyes of the world and God. It was obvious. Everyone could see that they are full of wickedness. Some of these people repented and some did not. In the case of Saul who became Paul, he never planned to repent. Saul was always eager to go and to kill Christians. You may think Saul was illiterate, which made him like that. He knew about the law. He was something we can call a scholar. He could read and write perfectly. Paul was full of wickedness. He traveled everywhere in search of Christians to kill. He monitored the death of Stephen. Do you know what happened to him? God forgave him. A man that hunted the children of God was forgiven by God the Father. That should make us think of something right now. It doesn't matter what your past life is. It doesn't matter how great your sins are. There is someone who can forgive you, even forget them. This is a message of love to everyone who is struggling with the guilt of sin. Aren't you glad that you are forgiven? You may hold my past against me, but bless God, I am forgiven. You may still hate me for the things I have done, but bless God, I am forgiven. You may try to dig up my past, but bless God, I am forgiven. You may think, I deserve to go to hell, but bless God, I am forgiven. There are people that will never forgive you. There are people who want to define your whole life because of one sin or 30 sins you have committed, but bless God, you are fully forgiven. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You are not too filthy to ask God for forgiveness. You may have lived your whole life in sin. Your family may have been destroyed because of your sin. You may have slept with more people than you know their names. You may be carrying hell on your back, but God will forgive you and you can walk the rest of your days clean and pure. When God forgives you, he doesn't do it on whether the people around you forgive you or not. God does not need man's approval to forgive you. God forgives you simply because he loves. You are fully forgiven. The town may still remember your sin. Your family may not forgive you. I mean your mother and your father may not forgive you for what you have. But God has fully forgiven you. An old time preacher once said, God doesn't want us to do wrong. And a true Christian does not want to do wrong. But the truth is, you are not going to heaven because you are doing right or have done right or because you will do more right. You are going to heaven because Jesus divinely forgave you. You are divinely forgiven. If Saul, a killer, can be forgiven and changed to Paul, I don't know what your sin may look like. God is ready to forgive you. There is something we should never forget that is true, that God will be angry with sinners, but only sinners who refuse to repent. What have you been doing now that is ungodly? What are the things that you feel like you are getting pleasure from? It is time to destroy them. The common thing most people are struggling with today is idolatry. It is everywhere. You may be thinking right now that you are not an idolater. The truth is that anything that is between you and God is an idol. We often take our time to focus on some irrelevant things in this life, and we believe we are following the normal trend. We are being blinded by the devil to go far away from God. 
We have been following the plans of the devil blindly. You spend much time with your phone watching things that are irrelevant to your life. You have made that phone an idol that you are worshiping. You sit in front of the TV to watch movies that are not adding anything to your life. You worship the actors. You worship them and you wish you became like them. The truth is that these people you are calling your idols are not going to add anything to your life. Many of them are empty. We see many youths going the wrong path in their lives because of those they made their idols. Evil is moving fast in the world, and this is because of idolatry. You are a Christian. You worship God, but you have an idol in your life. They will cause you to stumble. They will make you go far away from God. God hates idols. He will never have anything to do with people who are idolaters. Are you into prostitution? That is your idol. Are you addicted to stealing? That is your idol. It is going to kill you. It will destroy you without a solution. What have you been allowing yourself into through what you are worshiping? God called himself a jealous God. He does not like it when you make something he created or something that human beings created to become your God. It is wrong. What are your sins? What have you done that the guilt is in you right now? You are afraid and you are not okay with the guilt of sin. God is love. He doesn't care how big the sins are. He will forgive and forget. So I am here today to tell you, God will forgive you. Confess your sin. Even if you have just failed and committed the same sin again, God will forgive you if you ask. This should be a bell to you. It doesn't matter what your sins are. It doesn't matter where you are coming from. It doesn't matter what you have done. God will always forgive, but one thing is required of you. You need to humble yourself. To humble yourself means to acknowledge the fact that you have sinned greatly. It means to place yourself before the Lord as one who has no power to help themselves. It means you should ask God for his mercy. He will surely have mercy on you. You don't need to carry that guilt of sin all around. You can just drop them at the foot of the cross. Today, the shame, the guilt, the abuse, the evil, the hardened heart, place them before the Lord today. Humble yourself and let God lift you. Let God change your name like the name of Saul was changed to Paul. Let God take away the afflictions and let him give you rest. This is not the time to think that your sins are too great. What you should be thinking of is how to ask for forgiveness. Jesus is waiting for you. He wants to give you life. He loves you. He has died so that you can live in him. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't waste his love. Romans 8, 38 through 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This verse answers the question, will God stop loving us? Will the devil convince him to stop loving us? Paul was sure of what would happen, and that is why he wrote that nothing could separate us from the love of God. The devil cannot succeed. Demons cannot succeed. Fallen angels from the pit of hell cannot succeed. They cannot stop God from loving you and me. The love of God is pure. One thing that you should know and hold on to is that the love of God doesn't know the end. God has no end. He is everlasting. He will always remain the same and will never change. In this same manner, the love of God is forever. How do we know this? 1 John 4, 8, King James Version says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. God himself is love. Love is the identity of God. It is the nature of God. When you see God, you have seen love. Love is what God is all about. Because God is everlasting, the love in him is everlasting. What did he do with this everlasting love? Jeremiah 31, 4, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness I have drawn thee. I want us to understand this very well. That everlasting love that God has in himself, he showed it to us. He loved us with the everlasting love. This is how much God loves you and me. This is how far 
he is willing to go to prove to you that he loves you? Why should you have it in mind that God doesn't love you? Why should you allow the devil to make you think that God doesn't love you? If God never loved you, you would not have the assurance of heaven. If God doesn't love you, you would have been destroyed by the devil. But God who has loved you with an everlasting love helped you and protected you. Also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.